Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, thanks for joining us. Well, you can't drive around the state without seeing massive construction going on, and it's badly needed. But first, let's talk about the power struggle in our state. Back in a moment. Welcome to the fast-paced and unrehearsed weekly discussion featuring the leaders who help shape your world. Join us as we address the issues that impact you each and every day. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, we have a number of important subjects to get to today. And so let me start with uh, our two guests, Mark Levy. He's the with uh, a writer with the Associated Press and Angela Columbus. She's a writer with Spotlight PA. Angela, I want to start with you. Well, as we chat here right now, there's a power struggle going on for control of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. And the fact of the matter is, this is important. We have a Democratic governor, we have a Republican state Senate, and the battle is over which party controls the House of Representatives. Ultimately, I think we know how that's going to turn out. Right. So. At the heart of this struggle, really, uh, is who is in the majority right now yeah. in this moment. We know that on paper, after the November election, Democrats won 102 seats in the House and Republicans won 101. So it's a razor thin majority for the Democrats. However, there are three vacancies currently. So that puts the Democrats down three seats and technically in the minority. Um, and right now, uh, what we saw, what happening this week is that the um, leader of the Democrats, you can't really call her the majority leader, uh, was uh, sworn, sworn in in, yeah. in private and without uh, notice and then called for elections for these three seats to be held in early February. And that's Representative Joanna McClinton, that's who right. is the first uh, sworn in uh, House majority leader, uh, African-American in the state, as I understand it. And so they went through the swearing in, but obviously Republicans aren't happy about this. Well, there's definitely going to be a legal battle over it. There is some kind of question as to whether she can do that. She does say that there is a precedent for it uh, dating back to 2004, uh, but ultimately this matter is going to end up in court. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mark. We know at least. Well, there are many individuals, many of us are concerned about it for obvious reasons, so the state functions uh, well. And then you've got uh, a guy by the name of Josh Shapiro, the new governor, who obviously has to work closely with the House. He does. And, you know, we're coming off a stretch where his predecessor had historically large Republican majorities in both chambers. Uh, you know, Josh Shapiro could be helped by having a Democratic House. Um, you know, they'll still have to negotiate with the Republican Senate. But um, you, you could argue that Tom Wolf had better luck with the Senate on his major priorities than he did with the House. Yeah. And so to the extent that Democrats will eventually maybe have control <laughs> of the House, that could be well, a help. You're on to something. There are three vacant seats uh, right, right now. Austin Davis, the lieutenant governor, resigns. That's a Democratic seat. Summer Lee, another Democrat uh, in the state house, was elected to Congress. And then we have the death of Tony DeLuca. Uh, and so that, that, that's a Democratic seat. So it seems to me, unless something dramatic happens, and these as I understand, Angela, are safe Democratic seats, or am I wrong about that? No, that's correct. They're in Allegheny County, and nobody disputes that they're probably going to go Democratic. But, Terry, really, what this is ultimately about is the fight over the speakership when yeah. the legislature, the full legislature, gets sworn in in early January. And if Republicans have the technical majority, they could, in theory, put somebody in there who is a Republican, even though yeah. we know that eventually uh, Democrats are going yeah, to take control. Within a month or six weeks, that's all going to change. Right. Look, I, I don't know. There's a lot of palace intrigue and a lot of people <laughs> talking about how Republicans could actually uh, not seat the people who are elected in these special elections if you have a Republican speaker who refuses to seat them. So, you know, maybe cooler heads will prevail, but um, right now no one in that, in that building really knows how this will all end 
or yeah. where or, or where or, or where it seems a little logical to me but what do i know about these things i mean you know you just look down the road it would take and i understand republicans ought to be optimistic about winning these seats and the elections have not occurred so i guess we shouldn't get too far ahead of us all right we're going to run to a break when we come back uh governor wolf uh, two terms he's he's out of office uh shortly and let's talk about his legacy and we'll get back to you soon this broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. All right, Mark Levy, let's chat a little bit about uh, the legacy of a guy named Tom Wolf, Governor Tom Wolf. He's ending uh, two terms. Uh, what, what do you think were his most significant accomplishments? Well, most people are going to say uh, the money that he raised for public schools. It's about 40 percent more now than it was when he came in. The schools had suffered a very deep cut in, in funding under his predecessor. And, um, you know, he was able to work with, uh, as I said before, historically large Republican majorities in, in the uh, in the state house to get more money out to public schools. But, you know, I, I think it, it it bears notice that um, it he is coming off a second term that is unlike anything that we've oh. seen that a governor deal with in decades. Uh, one was a pandemic where he was making life and death decisions for a state early on when we knew very little about the, the virus and when Pennsylvania was one of the first states hit. So there wasn't a whole lot out there to look at. And second, you know, the election, defending the sanctity of uh, the state's election, which was critical in the uh, presidential election 2020 when you know, people rightfully wondered whether we were going to maintain a democracy that um, in which, you know, elections uh, run who is, is the president and decides who is the president and aren't overturned through um, anything other than the will of the voters. Yeah. Tell you what's sort of fascinating. I kind of I observed these personalities and how they interact. He, he, he wasn't overly combative, meaning he didn't go out and try to initiate fights by attacking the personalities of the other, uh, you know, the other office holders in the state. And that's pretty intriguing because a lot of politicians go, I mean, they go viciously go after their opponents. Uh, that's correct. I think there has been a, an arc um, in the uh, governing style of, of Governor Wolf. Uh, he came in uh, and, you know, for the first two years, fought pretty hard with the Republican-controlled uh, oh, sure. legislature. There, were, there was a historic budget impasse, but quickly learned that um, it is better to negotiate and yeah. ended up getting things done. And I think one of the really big things, speaking of elections, that he did get done with the help of the legislature, obviously, is uh, mail ballots and the availability of mail ballots, no excuse mail ballots, so people could yeah. vote by mail and do so Good during point. the pandemic. Yeah. Now, uh, segue into the Shapiro transition. I don't remember a time when you've had so many a large number of people involved in the transition. That's not a criticism. I mean, Republicans and Democrats, business and labor. So, and Shapiro has, has started out by trying to include as many people as possible. I mean, he clearly, a former attorney general, we clearly understand, and the House of Representatives member, clearly understands the nature of the office. Well, and he's also been around for a long time and has a lot of deep relationships with people. So um, it, it may be that we haven't had a governor who had this sort of um, track record in, in office um, as we've had with him, even though he's relatively young. Right. 
I mean, he was a state representative, he was a county commissioner, he's been the attorney general. Um, he knows a lot of people, he's been around the state a lot, um, and he's been doing it for, you know, going on 15, uh, uh, 16 years now. And um, I think that that shows that um, he has those relationships across the aisle. And we're yeah. comment today. Yeah, I mean, and I think his transition team is really a reflection of what he has said he wants to do, which is to work um, with Republicans and Democrats alike to get things done. I mean, that is, it, talk, speaking of personalities and traits, I mean, that is his M.O. He is a doer, and he wants to get an agenda through, and he realizes what it takes to, to get there. Yeah. Well, look, I want to thank you for coming on. All right, coming up, here we go. Transportation funding, electric vehicles, and automated speed enforcement. We'll get to those subjects after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Cross State Credit Union Association. Credit unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, go to ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. All right, joining me now is Bob Latham. He's the executive vice president of the Associated Pennsylvania Constructors, and we're going to talk about a lot of aspects of transportation. I'll tell you, uh, Pennsylvania is a big state geographically. It's got a huge number and, and uh, mileage of roads. You're the expert on this, and it seems like you can't move Two miles without saying construction ahead, work zone ahead, right? Well, uh, we're coming to the end of the season here, so we'll have a break over the winter time in some of these projects. But yes, uh, we've been fortunate with the uh, Congressional Act that was passed a year ago that boosted money for highway construction and, and road improvements and bridge improvements. So we, had, we are seeing more projects. A uh, couple of the featured things that we're seeing is the uh, central Susquehanna Valley Thruway. That opened a big bridge up there around Sealands Grove and a, and a great uh, new facility there. Uh, we're seeing a lot of work on I-95 now, uh, work that's been delayed for decades that uh, to finally finish uh, some of the expansion and improvements to I-95. And then, of course, all over the state, we have more bridges than, uh, than any other state in the country. And uh, our geography and our weather requires that we fix them. So it's, uh, yeah. it's a busy time and, yeah. and a lot of important things and, being and done. we have a mountain chain that runs through the state as we go ahead. Well, like I said, yeah, we have rivers, we have, uh, we have the topography. And uh, you, know, you look at some of the other big states in the country, particularly in yeah. the south, they don't have the weather we have, they don't have the mountains. And uh, so it's a daunting task. Uh, we say. always say we have more state roads in Pennsylvania than New England and New York combined. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about funding. Sure. Um, we came to the end of the legislative session last, last uh, month, and uh, now we're looking forward because we have a new administration. Uh, we're very optimistic about Governor-elect Shapiro and, uh, and his priorities in, in infrastructure and economic development. In fact, mm -hmm. he's uh, made economic development and transportation infrastructure sort of a linchpin of his transition teams that have been announced, uh, announced recently. Um, Let's go back. Uh, we've been talking about this, Terry, for quite some time. The, the money going from your and my gas taxes to the general fund to boost funding for the state, state police. police yeah. uh, Governor-elect Shapiro has indicated that this is a, a priority of his, which is finding a good way, a new way to fund, properly fund law enforcement, not yeah. just at the, at the state police level, but at the local level sure. as well. And that would, that would inure to the benefit yeah. of the highway program as well. Yeah. So we're looking forward to working with the governor-elect and, uh, and his team on that. Yeah. Um, and you and I have chatted about this sure. before. We want the state police to be funded. The question is, where does the 
resources come from. That, that's the issue. Right. Well, I, uh, we, we really appreciate the governor-elect's approach to this, which is, you know, rather than talk about uh, a zero-sum game, let's, let's look at how we can uh, best, best fund law enforcement and make sure that they are fully funded. And by doing that, then you free up the money for, for highway uh, construction that's, that's really being paid for by motorists and their, and their license fees and their gas taxes and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about electric vehicles. Uh, obviously, there are, they're, they're around. It looks like they're growing. Uh, what's happening in the state in terms of electric vehicles? Well, you turn on TV and you watch a football game, you'd think that everybody in the world had an electric vehicle. Um, <laughs> that seems to be the only thing that's being promoted. Actually, they are still a, a relatively small percentage of the fleet, yeah. but, it's, but it's growing. Right. Uh, and that's a challenge. So looking at a transportation funding agenda going forward, you're absolutely right. We, a, 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 a program that is funded by a consumption-based tax, which is no longer being consumed or being consumed less, and in other words, if you drive an electric vehicle, you're not buying gas, you're not paying a gas tax. So we need to find a new, new ways in order to fund roads. So that's going to be a, a future uh, challenge for us in transportation funding, sort of moving away from the gas tax. Now, let's look at electric vehicles. And, and uh, we are building more and more charging stations. So there are two opportunities there for uh, opportunities for owners of electric vehicles to pay their fair share of road use. Uh, number one, uh, we could uh, have a commensurate registration fee, which is uh, for to what people pay for gas tax. So that would be an electric vehicle owner would pay a higher uh, registration fee. So, uh, your, so your bigger point here is that they need to participate in payment that goes into money that ultimately comes goes into construct road construction. That's that's correct. So we have a, we've had a. Uh, uh, um, a policy here in Pennsylvania where other states lean on other things. They have sales taxes, they have uh, gro uh, gross receipts taxes on vehicles, they have uh, value added taxes and things right. like that. We, we went with the gas tax as opposed to some of these other things because it's a, uh, a user fee. In other words, yeah. if you have a low registration fee, you get to use the roads, but um, you pay, if you use them a lot, then you pay more in gas taxes. Well, that system is, is not working for us now because of the advent of, of vehicles that are powered other than through gasoline. Yeah. We're going to run to a break. I want to ask you what you think of how the legislature will ultimately deal with that. We'll get to that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. All right, Bob Latham, uh, an electric bill has advanced through part of the legislative process but not completed. What's in that bill and, and again, why is it important? Okay, so once again, uh, we're, our funding system for transportation is largely based on a consumption of, of gasoline. As we're not going to be consuming gasoline and electric vehicles obviously are not, uh, but they're using the roads. And, and I'm not just talking about passenger cars. We're talking about commercial trucks and so on and so forth. Amazon has announced that their, their whole fleet is going to be electric vehicles. So we, have, they have to find, we have to find a way for them to, have to, to pay their fair share of the road use. Mm -hmm. So there are two ways that we can go about this. We can apply a gross receipts tax when uh, when these vehicles are charging in public charging stations. That's number one. And number two is a increased registration fee. Uh, so right now we all have sort of a low registration fee right. uh, for so vehicles. They would pay a higher would pay a higher fee and that would offset the fact that they don't use gasoline. That's and, exactly and right. And that was the bill that's been uh, been around for several sessions now. So uh, that's something that we, we can look at uh, as well going forward. So if you do something like that, coupled with uh, uh, finding the new way to fund the state police, which, uh, which the governor-elect and also uh, Senate leaders uh, have talked about, uh, okay. one of the champions of that was uh, Senator Joe Pittman, who is now the Senate Majority Leader. So, yeah. so transportation is pretty high on the agenda, uh, we think, which is, uh, which is a very positive thing. It's something that touches everybody yeah. here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, and we're looking forward to sort of the new leadership coming in here and solving some of these problems right. that are still uh, lingering around. All right, I have, I have to ask you about automated 
speed enforcement. What is it and why is it important? Okay, so five <laughs> years ago, we became one of the one of three or four states to implement in our highway work zones, uh, cameras, if you will, speed cameras, uh, in certain areas when, the, when workers are present to try to encourage motorists to slow down. We've talked about the, the increased speeds and reckless driving that we've seen lately. Uh, this is a way that if people know that, the, that they're going to get a ticket if you go flying through a highway <laughs> work zone, maybe they'll slow down. We've seen this work in Maryland and other states. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so this bill is, is up for renewal, I guess, if you will. This law is up for renewal. We've seen it. It's working tremendously. It's it's lowering speeds in highway work zones. And the idea here is the, the ultimate goal is that there will be no fines assessed ever because everybody drives a we'll, proper we'll speed limit properly. through through highway work zones. And you believe that that's, that program has actually improved work safety zones, right? That, that uh, go ahead. Absolutely. I mean, you think about it. Uh, the folks that are working on our roads, not just for private companies, but also for PennDOT and the Turnpike Commission, uh, their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers, and uh, they deserve a, a safe work environment in order, to, in, in order to get their job and complete it and come home safely every, every night after being at work. Um, but the other most important thing about that is highway work zones suddenly sometimes are disruptive to the to the flow of traffic. You have lane shifts and that sort of thing. Yeah. And if people are speeding through that, it's very dangerous for the drivers themselves. Most of the fatalities in work zones aren't workers, but they're actual drivers themselves. So it's good for the motoring public as well. Now, was that uh, speed enforcement, automated speed enforcement, no longer law? Did it, did it expire? Uh, well, it has a sunset coming up this year, so we just need oh, to okay. renew it. So we're, we're hopeful to see it. We'll hope for to see it renewed. There's going to be some tweaks that are going to be offered, ways that we can make improvements, uh, uh, maybe uh, improve some of the notices, uh, you know, and, and improve those types of things. So there are some, that'll be part of the legislative process this And year the legislative well. process that you would like to see would end up with having the automated speed enforcement law be permanent and We'd like not to have to renew it over and over again. We think that, uh, you know, the original law had a five-year sunset right. as a pi test pilot. We think it's working well, uh, and now it's time to remove the sunset, make it permanent, and, uh, and make some other uh, minor improvements to it as well so it can be something that is institutionalized yeah. uh, going forward. Before I let you go, are you optimistic about the things we talked about that the that the legislature uh, will will get it done? I believe so. We have uh, we have great new we have well we have leadership on the House side uh, that's been supportive of this. We are going to see new chairs of the transportation committees, uh, both on uh, the Democrat and Republican side on the House. Uh, but uh, uh, on the Senate side, as, as, as I mentioned, the, the uh, pro tem ward, uh, nice. majority leader, uh, all transportation okay. advocates. Look, I want to thank you for coming on. Great update. All right. We'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, you stay well.